Vanessa the Crafty Gemini and in this video tutorial I'm going to teach you how to take a quilt block and turn it into a mini quilt with some big stitch hand quilting. To turn our little quilt block into a mini quilt, here are the supplies that you're going to need. A piece of backing fabric that's a little bit bigger, it doesn't have to be perfect, just something that extends past, because after it's all quilted, we'll be trimming it down to size, so you just want excess on all four sides of the block. And then you're going to need some batting, and there are like a million different types of battings out there. For a mini quilt, I'm not too picky. Typically you'll see, mostly in your fabric stores, you'll find 100% polyester, 100% cotton, or a blend of the two. Usually about an 80% cotton, 20% polyester mix. Whatever batting you have on hand will work fine. If you don't have batting, you can use fusible fleece, whatever it is. This is not really going to be a big quilt that people are going to be using. If it's just for decoration, any batting scraps that you have on hand will come in handy. All right, so I'm laying my block on top of the batting, and notice again, I'm leaving a little excess, and I'm just going to roughly cut around. This doesn't have to be perfect. I just need a piece that's going to cover the entire block that I want to turn into a mini quilt. So now we have what we call the three layers of our quilt sandwich. We have the quilt top, the batting, and the backing. And keep in mind that whether you're working on a small wall hanging kind of mini quilt like this, or a really large quilt for your bed, you're always going to have the same sandwich. Top, batting, and backing. Now once your quilt sandwich is in place, you need to baste the three layers together so they don't move for when you have to go in and quilt it, whether by hand or by machine. So I'm going to share with you a few of the probably most popular ways to baste. There are a ton of techniques out there, and really I encourage you to play around with some different ones and see what you think works for you. The first and uh, um, probably the most known out there is pin basting. Now these are regular big safety pins. They also sell some like curved ones that are easier for you to get through all three layers. And so the idea is that you put the pin through all three layers so that you're holding the quilt sandwich together and then you go through and you pin them closed. Okay, there's all kinds of gadgets that help you kind of close them faster because if you're working on a really big quilt, you're going to need a ton of these safety pins. But then as you're quilting, you'll then have to go in and remove them as you go. I find that too cumbersome and I don't have that many pins. I'm just not interested in that technique. Another option that I sometimes will use is a temporary spray adhesive. And I use um, Sulky KK2000. If you're interested in trying this, I'll include a link in the description box below. The idea is that you, of course, in a well-ventilated area, will spray the back of your patchwork pieces, and then you just smooth it out onto the batting. And it just creates like this little layer of uh, a temporary adhesive film, and it sticks to the batting. Then you repeat that on the backing side to this side as well, and then all your three layers will be contained together. So that's always an option. However, on a lot of my projects, I find myself hand basting more and more often because I think it's easier and it's just super simple to do. A lot of people think, oh no, she's grabbing a hand sewing needle and some thread. I'm not into that. But I'm gonna show you, super easy and super quick. I just grab a contrasting thread, it doesn't have to be any fancy specific thread, just any all-purpose thread you have on hand in a contrasting color because you want to be able to see it on your background so you know to avoid it when you're quilting. I just cut a piece of that thread and I thread it through the needle eye. You don't even have to tie a knot or anything. Now we're going to come here and I typically start kind of close to the edge so that I make sure that all the four edges are really nice and basted down so I don't get any of this lifting up, okay? So we're going to start at the top. And you're going to push the needle through all the layers, okay? You want to go through all three because that's the idea. We want to hold all the three layers of the quilt sandwich together. And then I'm just going to come back up to the top. And I usually space this about half of an inch from where I went in to where I come out with the needle. Then you're just going to pull that needle. Don't pull it all the way since we have no knot on the end. And I just leave a little tail there and I'll go right back in and do the same stitch that I just did underneath it. And that typically helps secure it because you see that I still have this little tail sticking out. Just don't pull it too hard, otherwise you'll pull the whole thing through. But leave it like that, that's enough to have it secured. Then I come about four fingers down from when I just went in, and I'll do another stitch like that. So just into the fabric and come back up, making sure you want to feel the table that you're working on when you go in with the needle. That makes sure that you're going through all three layers. And you can see my little stitch right there. Come up. And do the same thing you just work your way about the same distance continuing down you know for whatever the size of your project is now you can see that i still have thread left even though i've come to the end so what i do is i just turn this come down about the same distance 
take another stitch, same thing here. Okay, and I still have thread, so I'm gonna keep working my way around. And you can see, I mean, literally it just takes seconds, seconds. And when you get to the end and you just wanna hold it into place, since we have no knot, I'll simply just come in and do two stitches. One and two, the same way that we started it here, and that is enough to anchor it into place. Our little mini quilt has been basted, okay? All three layers are nice and put together. And what you should see is just kind of these long stitches on the front side. And when you flip it over, you can hardly see anything. There's just a few little stitches just of where we went in the fabric and came up again, but making sure to grab all three layers. And if you're wondering about the fact that I didn't put any basting stitches in the center, remember, this is such a small project. If you flip it over and you're a little hesitant about how there's no stitches in the center, grab it and see. You can see that it lays nice and smooth. As long as that fabric was smooth when you went through and hand basted it, it's gonna hold it in place. The idea is we wanna keep three layer, the three layers of the sandwich together as we go through and quilt because our quilting stitches, whether by hand or by machine, are going to further hold the sandwich together. And, and then at that point, we won't need these hand basting stitches any longer. And because they're super long stitches like this, at that point, you'll be able to literally just grab the thread and pull it out and it'll come out like that. Now let's talk about quilting the quilt, okay? We've layered the sandwich, we've basted it together, now it's ready for the decorative quilting stitches. Now quilting, is the act of stitching somehow through all three of these layers, okay, through the quilt sandwich. But quilting is also the art of making quilts, right? So sometimes beginners get confused with that. So when I talk about quilting now, that means what am I gonna do to stitch through all these three layers to add a decorative touch, to finish it off, and to make it exactly how I want it to be um, with the textured stitches, whether it's on a long arm machine or with some hand quilting stitches. Now for the purposes of this video, I'm gonna teach you how to do what they call big stitch hand quilting, which is one of my favorite ways to hand quilt because it goes a lot faster than traditional hand quilting. Now for the quilting part of making this little mini quilt, we're gonna hand quilt it. And for thread, you can really use any thread that you want. The thicker the thread, the more pronounced the stitches are gonna be, like the more they're gonna pop. And then of course, dependent on the color of the thread that you use, uh, you can either have a thread color that blends into the background fabric or the patchwork, doesn't matter which, uh, wherever you wanna quilt it. Then you're gonna need a needle. Now, the basic things you wanna keep in mind for the type of needle that you use is, it needs to be a needle that has a sharp point because remember it needs to go through all three layers and it needs to be a needle that has a needle eye large enough to fit whatever thickness of thread you're using. I typically will use a size 22 chenille needle. Some people have a tough time pushing these through the fabric. This is what works for me. So again, just be mindful, you know, kind of play around with a few different options and see what works for you. So I'm going to use a 22 chenille. Some other options on the market are like sashiko needles that you can get out there. These are super, super sharp. Do not play around with these things. Um, they're very, very sharp. I've poked myself plenty of times. And they're quite big. You see that they come in different sizes. But again, the 22 chenille needle is my go-to. Remember that any of the supplies that I feature in this video will be linked for you in the description box below this video on YouTube, okay? We have thread. We have a needle and we have a thimble. Some people wear thimbles, some people don't. This is the one that I prefer for a couple of different reasons. It's metal. It has a little lip here that I can get under and push that needle through, especially when you're quilting through uh, three layers of fabric and batting. It comes in really handy. And then also if you have cute manicured nails or long nails, it's not completely contained, so you can have your nails sticking out here without interfering with your hand quilting, okay? So just some things to keep in mind. Now the thread that we're gonna be using here is a 12 weight cotton. Remember with thread, the higher the weight of the thread, the thinner it is. So a 100 weight thread is gonna be almost invisible. This is a 12 weight, so it's significantly thicker. And it's actually the equivalent of two strands of embroidery floss. Okay, so keep that in mind. This is the thread that I prefer to use, and this also happens to be my thread collection that I collaborated with Sulky Threads on. It's called Crafty Gemini's Favorites, and it features all these six spools in the colors you see here. I love this collection because the colors go with so many things. You don't have to match them specifically to these. It just 
with the big stitch hand quilting, they just go. Like the stitches just look great on anything I use them on with these colors. So we're gonna choose uh, some thread colors here. I think I'm gonna start off with this dark teal, okay? So that it can pop against the white background and I'm gonna show you how I big stitch hand quilt. All right, so we're gonna take our needle and I'm just gonna feed the thread through. And I'm gonna cut no more than about 18 inches in length. The longer you cut your tail, the easier it is for it to get tangled. So it just works out better and you end up saving time in the end if you do this several times, like you work with just smaller chunks, okay? So this is what I have. On the end, we need to make a teensy little knot. Now, typically I will do just like this, but by the time I do that, I end up with a massive, massive knot. That's not gonna work to start off the big stitch hand quilting. So let me cut that off and show you a proper quilter's knot. In my right hand, I'm holding the needle by the eye, okay? In my left hand, I'm coming with the tail end of my thread, and I'm gonna bring that tail end right above the needle eye. So with this same hand that I was holding the needle eye with initially, I'm now gonna grab both the tail end of the thread and the needle eye again. Now you see that the thread is coming out from here from under my fingers, whoop, where the tail was, right? So with this tail, now you're gonna wrap it around the needle twice. So one, two. Those two little twists that you can barely see, okay, on the needle sh shaft right here, I'm gonna push it so that they go right underneath my fingertips. So right now under my fingertips, I have the tail end of the thread, I have the needle eye and I have those two little twists, right? Well, with this hand, I'm gonna pull the needle and you notice what I'm doing. I'm pinching those two little twists that I had up there. And as you continue to pull the thread while holding on to that, you end up with a little baby knot, which is perfect for hiding under the top layer of your quilt sandwich here for big stitch hand quilting. If you want, you can draw lines and actually let me grab my fabric marking pencil so I can show you um, if you want to use that technique to get some really straight lines. For marking out your stitching lines, if you want them to kind of follow a specific shape or an outline of something and you'd like for them to not look as free form as just winging it by hand, you can always do some lines. So I have an air and water soluble marker here with a ruler. And all you're going to do is take a, a line that's on a quarter of an inch line on your ruler and line it up with the patchwork. So with the seam right here. You see how I'm doing that? The seam line is going to be on this first dashed line, which is my quarter of an inch, like that. And now from there to here is going to be a quarter of an inch, and that's going to give me a pretty good buffer, okay, of where I can come in to stitch to outline this red piece. So I'll turn it this way, do the same thing, okay, and you can see. So now I know I can stitch here, pivot here, and come down, go off into... Um, the, the binding or whatever, does it matter? Repeat it on the other side, and this is a really quick way to just quickly do an outline for yourself. All right, so it's kind of light because I live in Florida and it's really humid here. <laughs> so all the moisture in the air is like making it disappear, but I can still see it. Hopefully you all can see it and you get the idea so you can do it at home with whatever your preferred fabric marker is. All right, so now we have quilting lines and we have our thread on the needle with the little knot we made on the end. We are absolutely ready to start hand quilting. So here's what I do. You see and spot kind of where on the line you want to begin. You're not going to start on the line. You want to start at least about, uh, you can eyeball it, just a quarter of an inch or half an inch away from the line. And I'm only going through the top layer. So do you see how you don't see my needle on the back? You don't want to see it, okay? You want to just come away from the line that you want to start on, just through the top layer of fabric, okay? And I'm going to come out on the line. When you pull, you'll see that you'll get some resistance towards the end because that is where our knot is. So what I do is I just put my finger on top of the knot to kind of brace it since I tend to be super rough and yank on this thing. But you do want to kind of give it a pull on the thread part. And you see what happened? The little knot disappeared. So now I'm not going to pull too hard because I'll pull it out of this hole too. But this is now secured. There's a knot underneath with a, a little extended tail. 
but now I'm ready to start stitching right on my guidelines. And if you notice, there's no knot on the back either. So that's how you want to do it so you can start off with a nice, clean um, beginning. And we'll do that at the end as well to finish off our stitching. So now for the big stitches. And big stitches, it's really dependent on what you want to do. You can do huge stitches like that from here to here. You can do really teensy little baby stitches, okay, like these. I tend to just like start stitching and whatever comes out, comes out. So to stitch, I'm going in the fabric through, like right on the line, my guideline that I drew. And you can see I'm going through all three layers. There's my little needle, okay? And then you want to come back up. So if you notice, I have a finger underneath here and I'm using that finger to push this back up and guide it through the three layers again to come out on the top. So again, the needle is in on the line. I feel it in the back with my middle finger. And then with this finger, I tend to like push this down like the quilt top, quilt sandwich itself so that I can make way to come up with the needle. And this is gonna take some practice and kind of what works for you and just feeling out how, what is comfortable for you to hold your things. If you notice, I'm not using a hoop. A lot of quilters will hand quilt their quilts using hoops. I feel like I have more control when I'm quilting it loose like this, especially for a small project. So again, we're going in on the guideline that we drew, poke through all three layers, and when you come back up, so let's talk about the distances. Where you go in with the needle and come back out, that right here, this little hump that you see in the quilt sandwich, that's not gonna be a stitch. That's the spacing in between your stitches, okay? So you'll see, when I pull my needle out, that was this chunk of fabric here in the middle. So that finished off a stitch and began my next one, but there's no stitch in there. So when you go in, that is going to determine your stitch length where the thread is coming out from to where you go in. So from here to here, that will be my stitch. But on the way up, when you bring that tip of the needle back out, that's the spacing. So the idea for more in, in traditional hand quilting is that you try to keep it consistent, but really I just do whatever I feel like doing. And you'll see, we have one, two, three, four, five stitches already done there. And you can see mine are pretty big. That one actually came out a little crooked. No big deal. Just gives it a more organic feel. Now, when I get to the corners, this is something a lot of my students often ask is how do they come in an opposite direction? Like, how do you pivot? So I like to set it up so that I come out of the sandwich on a point like that. So that now you can see when I go back in, this is going to start another stitch from here to here. And I'm coming back up through my three layers. And then I have, this comes up to the point and it stops there and then a new stitch begins this way. And I find that's just like a quick and easy way to take those corners. Now I'm not using a uh, thimble yet, but I'll show you how I do use it because you can end up with a dent in your finger if you do a lot of hand quilting. The cool thing about this too is if you get a little distracted and you're not really paying attention, if you get off the line, all you need to do is pull the thread out and go back to where you were doing it correctly and then continue stitching again. Okay. So I go in where I come back up is the spacing between my stitches. If you struggle pulling the needle out with your bare fingers and it's chilly here today, so my hands are kind of numb a little bit. It's cold. But if you can't grab the needle to pull it up, once you make a stitch, you can also use, they sell like a little product that's like a little needle grabber thing that kind of helps you grip it better. So you can pull the needle up and out to complete those stitches. So if you notice, I'm already working my way halfway this way, okay? So you see all the stitches that we've done? Obviously the bigger the stitches, the quicker you'll be done. So I'm gonna continue ahead with this, and when I get to the end, I'll meet you back here so I can show you how I tie it off and finish it so we can bury the knots and you don't see a knot again on either the top or the back of our quilt sandwich.
All right, so you can see when I come off into the seam allowance, it doesn't really matter how you get across this way because remember, this is gonna be taken up by the quilt binding. So I just kind of like walk my way with the stitches until I get to the, the next guideline that I can follow. But I've gotten to the end here where you can see I don't have much thread left. So I need to tie a knot and then start off with a fresh chunk of thread, okay? So to bury this and finish off here so that I can pick up with the stitching again, here's what you do. With my left hand, I'm holding on to the thread that's coming up out of the fabric. And this is in the position that you wanna be. You wanna have the thread coming up and out of the fabric. With my left hand, I'm grabbing there. With my right hand, because I'm right-handed, I have the tip of the needle and I'm gonna bring it under. Okay, do you see how I looped it through? Now I have a loop created here. Well, with these two fingers, I'm gonna open that up and maneuver back and forth with this one until I can get that little twist what's gonna turn into a knot, okay, that we have there, down right on top of the quilt top where that hole was, where the thread was coming out of, you wanna maneuver it so it's all the way there. So you see, you don't want it up here. You see how that's not on the bed of, or like on the top of the quilt top here? You can even use your needle to help you, but it's movable. So just kind of glide it down, open this loop, and get it to right where it's on top of the quilt top. And right where it is in position, just put your finger right on it, okay, to hold it in place. Now we're gonna pull, pull, pull with this one. And you'll see that we've created a teensy little knot right in the same spot where it needs to be, where this thread is coming out of, okay? So now with my needle, I like to pull it aside to see exactly where it's coming out of from the quilt top here. And I'm gonna put the tip of my needle right in the same spot where it's coming out of. I'm traveling only in the quilt top, so the needle is not going through to the back. Just underneath the top layer of fabric, and I'm gonna go walk with it about a half of an inch away from here. When we pull this needle, you're gonna see what happens. We're pulling, 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 and because I went in the same hole, I took the knot with me. So now just kind of scratch it like that to close up the weave of the fabric, and you'll see that the last stitch you have is this one, and you no longer see the knot, but there is a knot. The knot was right there, and from there to here is the thread tail. So that's why I like to walk about a half of an inch with it under, so that I don't trim it with the knot directly under there, because it's easier for it to come apart. If you leave an extra little tail, it's a little more secured. Now I'll come in and really close to the quilt top, just trim it away. And that's it. Your knot is, and we'll look under here, buried under there, with an additional thread tail, okay? Which is never gonna be seen either on top or on the bottom. And that is how you finish off either when you run out of thread or when you finish quilting the whole project. Now I'm gonna thread up another needle so I can continue my way here and I'll meet you back here once I'm done quilting this block. Now let me jump in here with another tip. You can see I changed my needle from that 22 chenille. Now I'm using one of the sashiko needles and that's because I'm almost done. I wanna get it done faster so I put in a thicker, stronger needle so that I can do what is called load up the needle with my stitches. If you're working with a really thin or flimsy needle, this is not gonna work because you'll bend the needle and that's happened to me multiple times on different size uh, needles until I found the ones that worked for me. So you can see, this is what loading up the needle is. Instead of taking one individual stitch and coming up and then stopping to pull the needle, instead you go up, down, up, down a few times until you have about three or four different stitches on the needle shaft. So I'm going down, coming back up, going back in, coming back up, going back in. This is probably a little too much, but especially when you have batting in there. But you can see that now when I pull, I went all the way from here to here and I completed three stitches at a time. So that, once you get a little more comfortable, is something that you can do because it really helps you finish your projects a lot faster. So we're coming back to where we had started with our first stitches, and you can see I don't have too much thread to work with because I ran it kind of close, but 
let's end it off so we can tie it off. So to end, especially if you're coming back on a line that you already have some previous stitching, you need to complete your last stitch. So mine, I would want it somewhere here and then be coming up out of the fabric. It may look like you're taking an extra stitch, but it's not. So I'll show you. I'm coming in, up. I'm gonna take that last stitch and then I need to be coming back up out the fabric. I mean, that first one we did was a little crooked to begin with, but you can see how I've completed from here to here. So pretend that my thread isn't there and that's what you're gonna end up with. So the gap between that first and the last stitch, I don't want it to be too big, okay? So this is, I finished that last one and then come back out. Even if you're close to another stitch, just come back out. So now we hold the thread here, my left hand, come in and make a loop. And you can do two if you want to. One I think is fine for me. And now I'm gonna maneuver that little knot so it's right on top of the fabric. Put my finger there so it doesn't move and then pull, 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 pull with my right. And my little knot is there. Pick it up and look to see where it's coming out of. Going in just under the top layer of fabric. And then I'm gonna come out just a little ways over. Pull it so that I pull that knot under the fabric. You can see it's gone. I just have my little crooked first stitch there. And then again, trim close to the fabric and you're done. Now you can go back. If that's all the quilting that you wanted to do, of course. If you wanna do more, feel free to do more. So now you see my basting stitches, I just pull on them. And because we don't have any knots anywhere, it's not gonna get cut up. And I can pull it all out as one solid strand of thread. And now you can stand back and look at your little mini quilt block and decide whether or not you want to continue adding more, maybe echoing lines of more uh, quilting into the background. Maybe you'd like to come in here in the Patrick pieces and do some quilting as well. I really like doing this echo around because the red is already popping, but what happens when we stitch a quarter of an inch away is that it's kind of compressing the batting down in those areas. And what that allows the red part of the Patrick to do is to really puff up and pop out because the batting in there is nice and fluffed and it's not being compressed by these quilting stitches. So that's another way for you to add a pop of color and some fun texture to your quilt projects. All right, and now that our turnstile quilt block has been quilted, all the layers are put together, I definitely want you to click that subscribe button so you don't miss out on the next video. Because in the next one, I'm gonna show you how to square up this mini quilt. We're gonna talk about making and attaching our quilt binding, and then I'll also share with you my foolproof way to hang mini quilts on the walls. I hope you enjoyed this video tutorial, and if you did, make sure to hit it with that thumbs up below. Share it with your crafty friends across the different social media sites. And remember, if you ever need to get your hands on any of the supplies or materials featured in this video, I always include links for you right below in the description box. You can click that open and everything you'll need to know is right there for you. Thanks again for watching this video and I will see you in the next one. Bye. Make sure to hit it with the thumbs up below. Share it with your crafty friends along the so along the... <laughs> Here you can see that I have, no, did that already. Okay, so we are done hand, <laughs> hand quilting. Has been hand quilted. We are ready going. <sighs> you won't miss out on the notifications every time I upload a new video to here, to my, to here, to here, to my YouTube channel.